If your book is a house, what does the foyer look like? The book is like a long, thin, wavy tendril stretched into the sky from a small spot at the top of my head. At the end of the tendril, somewhere far in the sky where I cannot see is a mutilated black face. A little me is sitting on the top of my head, holding the tendril like the string to a balloon. Question, whose blood? The blood is a corrupted document of one's fate, but when I am beautiful and young and open with no features that distort or take away from, it's easy for the stranger to enter the space of my body like a god. Does the blood become a further stain on wet, light feet? I don't know. A psychic once told me that I would live a very long life epic, she said, like in a Russian novel. Really, it's only blood, very symbolic. So many days I spend in bed, bleeding out of my vagina, so hungry I'm distorted. I call people to my bed until I feel depleted enough to sleep. Question. We are wondering why there is a small self. Maybe the prologue is your body. Because the question at the center of the book is, why doesn't one just die? And the little me is holding the thin line because there is a squashedness to existing in the present. And I, I can't think about question. What I like is that the little self is holding the tendril like a balloon because it gives me the impression that you are letting the mutilated thing go. I can't think about how to exist now without pressing together big pasts and small pasts, big pasts like historical collective trauma and the narrow self-indulgent past of personal invasion, self-configuration at the hands of another, the mutation of blood, the development of the multiple anyway, the little one who holds the weight of the past, the little one holds the weight of the past. Maybe she is already dead as she sits, who knows? But then, as I was writing this book, it was the summer of Sandra Bland, and then the summer of Freddie Gray, and then some cute kid was shot in a big box store while holding a toy gun, and so many others of these deaths unexplained in the logics of rationality we hold so dear and the white boys are hand slapped for brutal rapes. Life just goes on. The past isn't the past, but the present. It's all laid out in the same space, time plane. The tendril becomes like a reaching into another dimension. Its symbolism changes. Question. Why exhale after the inhale? The breathing is the mantra. Could the trauma be keeping us alive. What happens is we walk through a door. On the other side of the door is a manifested future place. It's configured very differently from this one. Its shape is different, but we created it so we recognize it. We understand its workings, which are mostly based on intuition. In the book, what's keeping us alive is the ability to imagine something very other than what's been shoved down our throats, what's been taken up into ourselves. To imagine something other is to leave the known world. No death, but instead the door. To place a body alongside the grubby stranger, and then the stranger is in the lockbox, and then voila, a self is three intentional selves, and the Three selves are like different manifestations of this thing we call blackness. So now you know what the book is about. <laughs> <laughs>